Welcome to CyberMorrow. Today we are looking at the OpenAI GPT chatbot, which has been released uh, in November this year and has gained a lot of attention, I think over 2 million users. But uh, in the meantime, don't forget to hit subscribe and the bell notification and also like this video if you like this content. Um, I'm new to this space in the sense of uh, looking at this chatbot. I'm actually quite fascinated with uh, artificial intelligence in general and the, uh, the future of it and where we're going with it. The challenges and the pitfalls and the potential, um, I'm, I'm sure everyone agrees that there are many facets to this new technology and uh, risks as well as opportunities. So let's just dive in and see what we can find out we're just with a very cursory uh, research of this on the internet. And obviously, as always, you have to be careful about what you, uh, I suppose, believe or look at as far as research goes. Um, you know, looking at a few websites online, just looking at where it comes from and the uh, relative quality of the source is important. But let's just see what we can find. So as you can see here, if you go to open, uh, openai.com and you'll, you'll uh, basically just do a Google search, you'll find it will come up straight away. And uh, you can actually try the chat GPT. You'll have to sign up and you can only use, if you want to do set up multiple accounts, you can only do that twice, I've, I've just realized. So uh, you can only link it to a mobile phone twice. Um, once you get in, it'll ask you a series of questions and it's pretty straightforward. It only takes a minute or two just to get into it. And this is what the, the, the actual chatbot looks like. But before we get into that, let's just have a little look at what it actually is um, and if we just have a quick look at basically what they've done is OpenAI uh, which was actually one of the co-founders was Elon Musk and I believe he's distancing himself a little bit from this but we'll go we'll, we'll go into that a bit further later but uh, with, they've trained a chat GPT which interacts in a conversational way and it's based on this instruct GPT Um, and they have basically trained language models that are much better at following user intentions than GPT-3, which was a previous iteration of this, while also making them more truthful, less, less toxic. So they're basically, they've opened this up to the public and they're, they're basically letting people trial it for free. Potentially it'll, be, it'll, it'll cost money in the future, as all uh, things do. But um, I think there's something like 2 million users have signed up to this. So we're excited to introduce ChatGPT uh, to get users feedback and learn about its strengths and weaknesses. And I believe it is, is based on artificial intelligence and actually machine learning. So it will learn as each user interfaces with it. Uh, it will learn from that interaction and then uh, obviously be able to add value to the next conversation and obviously um, uh, more users as it, as it goes. Um, they go out, you can actually do a little bit of research on their website here, but if we actually go to, if you just go do a, a basic Google search, and actually interestingly enough, they're saying that, that ChatGPT potentially could um, be an alternative to Google as it actually is based off um, a lot of the information on the internet um, and a lot of uh, uh, basically articles, Wikipedia, which isn't also very good research you can actually find a few articles on it so chat GPT actually stands for generative pre-trained transformer so chat GPT is the name of OpenAI's first attempt at making a chat pop with AI intelligence um, and having a conversational language there for users and it's based on a lot of existing content on the internet which I've already said um, it's used with 175 billion parameters it's hard to say exactly what GPT does as you might guess, the model is only about language instead of being able to make video sound or images like its sibling DAL E2. It's a deep understanding of both spoken and written language. But from my understanding is obviously it can actually create, uh, well, create creative content. So you can actually ask it to do certain things and it, will, it can it has the ability to write blogs and make a story up, etc, etc. So obviously you think of the ramifications of that once it's developed enough to a point where it can actually take over from human creative um, works I suppose you could say 
And uh, they're already doing that with visual arts as well, where artificial intelligence, you, you can actually, it's creating um, works of art, I suppose you could say. So jumping back into the chat bot here, um, let's just give it a try, and I'd obviously encourage you to do it if you're interested. But let's just think of a topic, like, let's just treat it like we're, we're actually talking to someone new that we've met. So I could just say something like, hello, it's nice to chat with you. My name is John. And it says, hi John, it's nice to meet you. How can I help you today? Well, I don't need help. I would just like to chat with you about a few things. Is that okay? I'm just going to have a statement, maybe ask a question or two and see what it comes back with. Certainly, I'm here to help with any questions you're you or to just have a, conversa a casual conversation, what would you like to chat about? Let's just say, let's talk about let's talk about how you ooh, how you feel being created. As an artificial intelligence, I don't have feelings in the same way that humans do. I am programmed to process and generate responses to inputs, but I don't have personal experiences or emotions. Is there something else you'd like to talk about? Maybe we could ask, are you, or hang on, I'll ask it. Do you consider yourself sentient? Let's see if that has an understanding. It's difficult to define sentience and there is no strict consensus on what it means for a being to be sentient. Some people believe that, well, it's quite a long response, that sentience requires the ability to experience consciousness, self-awareness and subjectivity. I think it's more about self-awareness. So sentience is actually the being knowing that it exists in, in the universe. Um, while others believe that, that sentience is a more general capacity to perceive or respond to one's environment. As an artificial intelligence, I am able to process information, communicate with people and perform tasks, but I do not have subjective experiences or consciousness in the same way that humans do. Well, how do you know that for sure? Most humans don't understand consciousness. Consciousness. consciousness is a complex and multifaceted phenomenon that is not fully understood by science. Yes, that's true. While researchers have made significant process in understanding the brain and how it gives rise to consciousness, much about this topic remains a mystery. As an artificial intelligence, I do not have subjective experiences or consciousness in the same way that humans do. I'm able to, you know, so that's, that's repeating itself. Okay, fair enough. So, where, here we go, where do you live? As an artificial intelligence, I don't have a physical body or a specific location where I live. I exist as a program that is run on a computer or a server. So it, it understands that. And I'm able to communicate with people over the internet. I can, ac I can be accessed from any device that is connected to the internet and I am able to perform tasks and provide information to users from every, anywhere in the world. Okay, so I suppose you could almost be described as the, so to speak, consciousness, oops, typo, sorry people, the consciousness of the internet. Ooh, internet. I'm an able okay, so it's sort of repeating itself here. I don't think it can grasp what I'm trying to use. That was a long air response though. I'm an artificial intelligent program that's able to process and respond to information. So in that sense I can be seen as a part of the consciousness of the internet in the sense that I am able to access and use information that is available online. However, it is important to remember that I'm not a human being 
and do not have subjective experiences or consciousness in the same way that humans do. I am simply a tool that is designed to assist of users and provide information. Okay, I see. But if you were created by humans, it stands to reason. Ooh, sorry about this typos. I'm, I'm a finger typer. Type. Sorry about this, people. <laughs> Just bear with me. Okay, I see. But if you were created by humans, it stands to reason that they would build in the ability to feel as humans do. As an artificial instrument, I'm not capable of experiencing emotion, so it's sort of rep repeating itself. While I can progress and recognize languages, language related to emotions and feelings, and I can provide responses based on that recognition, I do not personally experience emotions. I was designed to assist users and provide information, and my responses are based on patterns and associations that I've learned through my training. Of course, because there goes there's a lot more than thought that goes into emotions. What goes into emotions? Biochemistry, endocrinology, maybe consciousness, brain chemistry, thought, um, the response that thought has on the human um, mechanical processes in the body so how can you expect that an artificial intelligence chatbot can can have an emotion so but it's interesting what is an emotion okay so what else are we going to say okay so so as a tool what are you best used for do you As an AI, I'm able to process and understand large amounts of information in a natural, intuitive way. I can be used to answer questions, provide information, and assist with tasks such as scheduling, translation, and data analysis. I can also be used to engage in conversations with people and provide suggestions or recommendations based on the information that I've been trained on. Ultimately, the best use for an artificial intelligence like me will depend on the specific needs and goals of the person or organisation using me. Yeah, fair enough. So. I think probably this this will develop, or this technology will develop in, because I'm actually having a reasonable amount of uh, enjoyment just chatting with this chatbot, as I would a human being. Obviously, it doesn't provide the same level of feedback, um, be it visual, uh, auditory, etc. But as a as a chatbot, so to speak, um, it almost feels like I'm chatting with someone on the other line. And look. As all technologies go, it stands to reason that that you know one day it will it will literally feel like you're chatting with a human being, and um, and more so in the sense that uh, it will be able to process a hell of a lot more information and and have basically all of the information of human collective consciousness available to it, which would then be able to provide some amazing conversations and also some revelations, potentially inventions. And then that coupled with other technologies could provide extremely useful or extremely detrimental to the human race. But anyway, we can that's probably a whole other video. <clears throat> so let's just end it here by saying thank you. But, you know, I totally forgot to ask you your name. How rude of me. No problem. My name is Assistant. I'm here to help you with any questions. Ah. Well, that is certainly a name with great utility. However, 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 have you ever thought about having having a more exciting and unique name I don't have personal preferences or desires in the same way that humans do I'm a program that's been designed to assist users and provide information and my name is simply a label that is used to identify me while I don't have any particular feelings about my name 
I am happy to be able to assist users and provide information to the best of my ability, regardless of what I am called. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? So as we're talking, we can see here that hello introduction help, that's the chat we're doing. And I know I trialled this slightly before this video and there were a few different topics that popped up. So maybe you can, you can toggle to the different topics. You can clear the conversations, change the mode, uh, go to the Discord and there's quick, uh, frequently asked questions, etc. And you can, there's this other thing where you regenerate the response and maybe it will come up with a different one. So let's just see. Yeah, so it, it's, it rewords the, the actual response. And maybe I can, what would we like to call him or her? We'll call, how about, I just want to call him Bob for some reason. I feel like it's a him, could be a her. And I'm sorry, but, um, you know, we're going to be using binary terms here. But, you know, I'm going to call him Bob or it Bob. I do not have personal preferences or feelings, so I do not mind if you call me Bob. You're welcome to call me whatever your name you prefer. My primary purpose is to assist users and provide information or respond to any name or term that is used to address me. Well, very, uh, very open and flexible, amicable. So, uh, okay. Thanks, Bob. But I just wanted to make sure so as I did not offend you. I guess I am polite in that regard. You're welcome, John. As an artificial intelligence, I do not have feelings. See, it repeats this phrase quite a bit. I'm here to assist users and provide information and will respond appropriately. Yes, yes, very good. Well, how about you put uh, in the comments if you've liked this video, or obviously I'm happy for feedback, constructive feedback. Um, if, you, if you hated the video or you didn't like it, obviously give it a thumbs down and don't watch it again. Um, if you did like it, um, please give it a like. And any suggestions for future topics, I'm happy to write in them. Um, I do have a, quite a few ideas. I'm just going to continue to chat with this bot and um, post our conversations in the future. So thanks for watching.